It's Entomology Animated, celebrating the amazing biology of insects using the power of digital animation. Ding! Hey there, this is Eric Keller, once again for Entomology Animated, and here I am in ZBrush 2018. In this uh, segment, uh, I'm going to take a break from discussing the technical aspects of CG modeling and focus more on some comparative anatomy, uh, specifically with regards to the arrangement of the eyes on this beetle model and how they compare to other beetle models. So, as you may or may not know, there are some 300,000, possibly almost 400,000 known species of beetles. Uh, I've modeled about six or seven, so I still have a ways to go before I get them all. But that being said, we can still see that there's a lot of diversity in the few models that I've already done. And this, is, this stuff is really interesting and it's great also if you're a creature modeler, you're not necessarily a biology nerd, but you're modeling creatures for your own fantasy worlds, whatever. There's some great ideas in here that you can steal from nature um, that I encourage you to take a look at. So let's see what's going on here. Um, so here's our rainbow scarab. And the cool thing about the eye here is the way that it's kind of cradled here in uh, the head. So I'm still working on the head. There's some stuff that I got to resolve, like all this stuff down here is probably incorrect it needs some fixing it's just kind of placeholders the good news is that i've just ordered a couple specimens of this particular beetle that i can throw under the microscope and start refining parts of these things so just expect that there's a few things in here that are still incorrect and still being worked out but that that being said we can still look at some, some interesting aspects of what i think is actually currently correct so i'm going to hide this bottom part here so we can sort of see the cool part is the eye here is kind of cradled in such a way so that part of it is exposed at the top and part of it is exposed at the bottom. Now right now this is just a sphere so I haven't added the hexagonal facets of the lenses yet that will be coming shortly once I get the specimens I can take a look at the closer look at the eyes but the sphere is you know well good enough for now. Um, I just wanted to kind of point out this sort of arrangement because it's really interesting and I, and I have to wonder if with regards to the omatidia, which are essentially the sensors of the eye, if there is a, some kind of structural or physiological difference between the omatidia that face, that are exposed to the upper part, to the elements down here, versus the omatidia that are down below the head that are probably in shade most of the time. You know, there's differences between uh, the structure of the omatidia between diurnal insects and nocturnal insects because of the amount of light that they're exposed to. So I wonder if this beetle actually has kind of a, some weird mix or something different between the structure of the eye down here and up here. That would be interesting to find out. If anybody knows of a paper or something like that, you know, please send me a link if it's available. Uh, let's take a look at some other eyes here. So here we have a tiger beetle, an upside down tiger beetle, there we go. A fearsome creature. These guys are, are uh, deadly predators uh, of other insects. Um, they have an eye that I would describe as being a little bit closer to what we expect in a typical insect eye in that we have most of the orb is just kind of exposed here. However, we do have this sort of uh, prominence coming over that's kind of shading part of the eye, which is kind of interesting. It also gives it kind of a mean, angry look. Um, for all we know, these beetles are perfectly happy, but they look kind of mean. Um, so you can sort of see this one had, does have the facets on the eye. So you can see this is what I'm talking about. Each one of these is a lens that sits on top of a omatidia, which is a large column that kind of channels photons of light. I'll be covering that in depth in another episode. Uh, but in any case, so this is tiger beetle eyes, kind of very different from our rainbow scarab. And here is a firefly. So this is uh, Forturis pensilvanica, and this is a bit more like the tiger beetle. It's a very big eye, and you can see the facets are very small. This is a nocturnal insect for the most part. And uh, so you can sort of see, it doesn't have any kind of prominence coming out. It's the eye is not divided between, you know, upper and lower portions. It's just a big old eye that's, that's sitting there, uh, looking at the world, looking for the flashes of potential mates in the evening sky. So now let's take a look at a rhinoceros beetle. And as you can see, so it has a very large kind of orb-like eye, but also has this prominence here that in a way similar to Vindex, it is kind of separating the eye between an upper part 
and a lower part in terms of what it's looking at. Right? So this part is kind of more shaded and sees the ground most of the time and this part is obviously seen above and then we have this division right here. So that is a rhino beetle. And this model is coming along probably further developed than some of the other ones. So we'll be texturing this one soon and rigging it and getting it to run, move around a bit. So this is a really interesting beetle that I'm working on. It doesn't look like a beetle because it's all rolled up into a ball. This is actually one of the harder models that I've ever done because of the fact that it rolls up into a ball. But what I want to kind of show you is that if you check out uh, Gil Wisen's blog, he has an awesome blog, he's an entomologist and photographer, and he has a series called Little Transformers, which talks about all these little bugs that have this interesting transformer ability to kind of curl up into a different shape. So this little beetle is really adorable, and you can see it has some images here showing it unfolding and even some videos too. So I am hoping to eventually, let's, let's rewind the video here and play it. So with the model that I'm creating right now, I am hoping to actually animate it so that you can see it unfold. Um, that's uh, really, really graceful there on the part of the beetle. Uh, but in any case, uh, that's gonna be a different topic. What I wanted to point out though, is that the, the arrangement of the eyes here is kind of reminiscent of Vindex in some ways because of the fact that we can see there's an exposed part here on the head. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hide parts of the model, these subtools, so we can take a look at what it looks like underneath. So what I've done is I've hidden all the parts of the beetle except for the head. So you can see this is what it looks like from the top. You can see the inside, I have parts of the mouth and the antenna. But we can also see that it also has this exposed portion down here so that it can see above the head, out here, and below. And I kind of have some temporary kind of like little dots there to represent the facets of the compound eye. So I'll probably neaten that up uh, fairly soon when I get around to it. But again, so that's kind of like our, our rainbow scarab beetle in a way. Um, really kind of a cool anatomical feature. And again, this one, it would be really interesting to study to see if the interior structure of the eye on this part is different from the interior structure of the eye on this part. Like if there's something about the omatidia that, that uh, processes light in a different way. Because I have to assume that this part of the eye is going to be in, in shade most of the time. So here is our bombardier beetle, which you might remember from my entomology uh, animated episode on bombardier beetles. So this is an older model, and this one looks a bit more like our tiger beetle. So you can sort of see that the eye is kind of more of a typical insect arrangement, or something that we would find more familiar than, say, some of the otter arrangements. And none of these beetles that I've shown so far have any ocelli, so they just have the two eyes. So I'll do an update when I get the specimens in the mail. We'll talk about how we can start to refine the head on Vindex, our rainbow scarab beetle here, and start to solve some of the issues down here below on the bottom part where the mouth is. All right, I will see you next time. If you're craving more information, detailed information on how I go about modeling uh, CG insects, please check out the hyper-realistic insect design video series that I created for the Nomen Workshop.